representative, state re representative for the, uh, uh, against um, Sean Kasten. Uh, our position, of course, is neutral as a 501c uh, organization. We have no stand with this or that. But we want to introduce her to you. And in the future, very soon, we're going to have another program, Meet the Candidates, uh, that will include everyone. Uh, I think she is ready, so let me just get her. Oh, she's ready. Assalamualaikum everyone. Thank you um, uh, ICW for letting me talk. My name is Mahnoor Ahmed and I'm running for Congress in the 6th Congressional District, which involves DuPage and Cook County. It is really critical for all of us to show up in the primary. The primary election matters twice as much than the general election. I started to run my platform on the base of healthcare. My background is in public health and seeing the disparities that I've seen in public health, I want a single payer system that is for all Americans. And then when I started running, um, the war broke out in Israel and Palestine. And my opponent is someone who is heavily funded by DMFI J Street, and he's not even calling for a ceasefire. He has the largest constituency of Palestinian Americans and Arab Muslims in the entire United States of America. We have to make it known to him. Our voices matter. We have the numbers, and we have to go out on election day for DuPage County. It starts February 8th, to March 19th. For Cook County, it's March 4th to March 19th. We have to go that day, and we have to tell him, we matter, we have the numbers. So please, go out there. I can't, I can't stress that enough. I know we're in a place where we're, we're just frustrated. We're so frustrated with what's happening. The only way to get rid of this guy who's not calling for a ceasefire is to run against him and win against him. That's the only way. If we sit this one out, if we don't do anything, and if we just lose faith, then, then, then we, there we are setting a fate for ourselves. We need to get over that, and we need to show up. We need to vote him out. I can't stress this enough. He not only is you know funded by, he's not only funding, a genocide, he's also defunding programs like FDA, NIH, that are crucial for our healthcare system. Even as a Democrat, there is nothing democratic or diplomatic about what he is doing. And I understand the ups upsetness when it comes to the Democratic Party, but that is exactly what we need to do elect true democratic candidates. Because what is happening in Israel and Palestine right now, there's nothing democratic or diplomatic about it. Let's be real. We need to get true candidates that support the cause, that understand what that is about. I am the only person on the ballot that's 100% uh, people funded. So. I'm not taking any money from corporations or big pharmaceutical companies. It's only individuals. Please check us out on my website. It's ahmedforhouse.com. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, uh, just a reminder, we will have two more events uh, coming up regarding the uh, election. So stay tuned. Inshallah, it will be announced. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khair.
Can somebody get me the microphone with the echo, please? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's always a pleasure to be here at ICW, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you all, may Allah reward you all, may Allah accept, and may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala make this evening a successful e uh, event, inshallah, that we all gain knowledge and then implement it in our lives. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان والسماء رفعها ووضع الميزان ألا تطغوا في الميزان وأقيموا الوزن بالقسط ولا تخسروا الميزان والأرض وضعها للأنام فيها فاكهة والنخل ذات الأكمام والحب ذو العصف والريحان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان خلق الإنسان من صلصال كالفخار وخلق الجان من مارج فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان صدق الله العظيم جزاك الله خير شيخ بارك الله فيك أحسن الله عليك Okay, so let's start some energy. I took the energy of the Quran of Sheikh Dadasawi and the presence of our uh, Sheikh, beloved Sheikh, Sheikh Fahmi. So now I'm going to reflect it back to you guys. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa ala. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassal li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma allamtana. Allahumma ya man allamta Adama wa Dawood allimna. ويا من فهمت سليمان فهمنا وما ويا من خصصت حبيبك خصنا بالعلم والفهم يا رحم الرحمين. So today we are talking about the biology of belief. This is based on the work of an American doctor. His name is Bruce Lipton, and he made a revolution because he did not believe that what he used to teach to the medical doctors at the medical school that genes control everything. So now we are going to talk about this. 
The first point, we are going to talk little biology. Don't worry, you don't need a big science background. Just a little bit about cells and signals. And then we are going to talk about the types of signals. This is very important because now when we talk about our Iman, when we talk about Zikr, when we talk about the Ruqya, all these things fit into the types of signals. And finally, we are going to see how does our Iman, our belief, or you could say our mind controls our biology. What is the most frequent word repeated in the Quran and the Sunnah? What is it? That everything always revolves around it. The word is Iman. Our Iman makes us and our Iman breaks us. Okay. Some of the estimates of the researchers and the medical doctors teach us that our body is a community of more than 50 tri trillion cells. Now we must remember that every cell is like a human being. It breathes, it eats, it secretes, it reproduces itself. So look at our body as a community of 50 trillion small human beings. Subhanallah. So you see humanity inside the human being. And then we as humans, we are like one body. So said Rasulullah So we are like cells in one body. So our body has cells and we are like cells in one body, the body of the ummah. This is how the outside of the cell look like. What's important here, that there are antennas. You know when signals come in, these signals will match the antenna. Once they bind with the specific antenna, the cell does something. It might open a channel. For example, insulin, what does insulin do? It binds to one of these receptors it opens one of these channels and glucose goes inside the cell. Okay? So this is very important. Now, let me show it to you in my art. This is a simple art of PowerPoint. Here is the cell. Here is the antenna. There are about, you know, tens of thousands of these antennas. I'm showing you one. So here it is. This is not the signal that we're looking for. It does not match. Huh? That does not match. This one matches, and then the cell does something. Make sense? Very good. Now, inside the cell, look what happens. The signal binds, and then inside the cell, you know, the cell starts doing things. So, the most important point here to remember is that you need a signal to activate the cell. Now, what happens if the cell needs something that is not present here. Well, the signal comes, it looks for the protein that is not present, it does not find it, it goes to the nucleus, to the genes. And then, as it reaches the gene, it takes the coating out, and then you have exposed gene. What does that mean? That the gene needs to wait for a signal from outside. Please remember this. Your gene will not be activated by itself. Your genes are not active by themselves. They have to wait for a signal from outside. That's why the signals that we provide are very, very important. Dr. Bruce Lipton took stem cell. Do you know what a stem cell is? Stem cell is a cell that is not differentiated. How many stem cells do we have in our bodies? We have billions. These cells wait for signals to help us repair our body. If we need to repair the liver, then these stem cells become liver cells. They receive signals and they become liver cells. If we need kidney cells, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created these cells present. A signal comes and said, hey, look, I need, I need to repair the kidney. So I need this stem cell, which is generic cell, to become 
a kidney cell. And that's how our body keeps functioning and repairs itself. Dr. Bruce Lipton took stem cells. When he changed the signal outside in a petri dish, he put chemicals. The stem cell, the same stem cell, once became bone, once became muscle, and once became fat. The same stem cell. What is the conclusion here? The environment around the cells in our body will determine the fate, what the cell will become. There are about 30 billion stem cells in a human adult. He did another experiment. He had a patient, he could not contract his muscle. So he took cells from the sick muscle and he took it to the lab and he put the chemicals and the cell worked perfectly. Conclusion, the cell was not working because of what? Because inside the body, there is a problem in the environment, but the cell is not sick. The cell is perfectly fine. And this is important for healing. When we heal ourselves, when we do ruqya, we need to believe that if I send positive signals to my body, I could impact self-healing. This is extremely important. Now, Petri dish, you bring cells, you put chemicals in the lab, and how? That's how you make the experiment. But in our body, the Petri dish is what? Is our blood. So the chemicals that surround the cells are found in our blood. Let's summarize quickly. A differentiation of a stem cell depends on the biology of the environment. In the case of the human body, it's the blood. The biology in our blood determines the fate of the stem cells that we have inside our bodies. To activate a function in a, a cell, you need a signal. Without the signal, there is no function. And to activate the gene, you also need a signal from the environment. So what is the most important thing that I have said so far? That it is all about the signal. If we control the signal, we are going to control what? Our body, our biochemistry, our cells, and we are going to impact our, fill in the blank, our genes. Let, let me repeat it one more time. The signals in our blood will impact the cells, will impact our genes. Now, let's look at the types of signals. If you control the two M's, you will control, inshallah, your health. What are the two M's? Your mouth and your mind. Because all the signals come through the mouth and the mind. So how about junk food as a signal to the body? What are we doing to our body? We are doing harm. We are creating cancer. We are creating diseases. Look at this beautiful ayah from the book of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha rusulu kulu mina tayyibati wa amalu saliha inni bima ta'amaloon alim. He says, Prophets, what is tayyib? What is the meaning of the word tayyib? It means good. It means quality food. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the same instruction to the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnaku. Same instruction to the prophets and to the believers. So we need to start controlling our mouth. And here it is. What's this? Can somebody tell me here, here, here. I'm going to make a click and one word will come here. What do you think the word is? Tayyib. Okay, Tayyib is from the Quran. Yes, young brother, yes. The biha, okay, the biha halal, very good. What else? What else? In Arabic, it's tayyib. In English, it will be what? Quality food. 
So please, when we talk about the biha halal, when we talk about food, when we talk about nutrition, we have to understand that one of the maqasid of sharia, one of the objectives of Islam is that we eat quality food. How about, mashallah, if I take the best dhabiha halal and then I go make, you know, bad stuff with it. If I process it, if I make it into food that is not good for the body. Is this the intention? No. So please now, the concept of dhabiha and halal food has to always be attached in our minds to what? Quality food. Because food is a major signal that goes into our body. It's going to affect our cells and our genes. MashaAllah. Very good. Let's talk about a psychological signal called stress. How many of you remember in basic biology, fight or flight? Who remembers fight and flight? Okay, so when we are under stress, when we are under stress, our body puts us in the mode of fight or flight. What does that mean? Okay, when medical doctors have to do organ transplant, let's say liver transplant or kidney transplant, do you know what chemicals they inject the patient with? If we have medical doctors here, and they know the answers. Ah, brother, over there. Stress hormones. Why? Because stress hormones will bring the immune system down. So now, I am living in life. If I interpret, if I think that outside is stress, my body will put myself in fight or flight. Here's what happens. Number one, you know, this is the viscera. Viscera, you have the vital organs. You have the heart, you have the kidneys, you have the liver, you have the stomach, the vital organs. When we are under stress, we go to fight or flight. The, the blood that is in the viscera that is surrounding the vital organs goes where? You are going to fight or flight, run away from the lion. The, the blood will go where? To the extremities, to the hands and feet. The forehead, which is responsible of a lot of the critical thinking, pushes the blood to the spinal cord because it's not time to think critically, it's time to run away. Fight or flight. What does that mean? Naturally, when we are under stress, we become less intelligent. Unless we control the stress. What else? The body pushed the blood into the extremities, the hands and the feet. No critical thinking. Spinal cord is active. And you need energy, right? Because you are going to fight or flight. You need energy. Where are you going to get the energy from? Tell me one of the systems in the body that uses lots of energy. And the system needs to bring it down in order to give you that energy to what? Fight or flight. What is that system? What is that system? Yeah, we, we, we talked about the, the brain. But there is one major system that the body says, it's not your time now. Give me the energy, give me the energy. I need to fight or flight. That system is the immune system. That's why people who are under stress have a tendency to get what? Sick. I visited Jordan. One of the teachers invited me. She said, I have a student that every time I put the test in front of her, she, she starts shaking. What was the problem? The test is associated with stress. Now the body is what? Why? Because she is in what? In fight or flight. She's not going to fight with the paper. She's, she, what does she want to do? She wants to run away from the test. Does that make sense? Yeah. So fight 
or flight is a natural uh, mechanism that we uh, experience. Another psychological input is the placebo or the nocebo. Placebo, you go to the doctor and they tell you, look, I'm giving you the last medicine that was invented. There's no better than this medicine. This pill, wow. This is a state of the art. A uh, hundred million people were cured with this pill. And you take it and you feel better, right? But 10 years later, when you become a doctor yourself, you find out that the doctor gave you what? What is the placebo? A sugar pill. <laughs> this is documented in psychology. They give you a sugar pill and you feel better. I know a lot of people just sitting down with a doctor, they feel better. How many of you can relate to this? You just cause you get to sit down and talk to the doctor, you feel better. Huh? So this is the placebo effect. Why? Because you start believing in the pill, although the pill was not medicine. It was a sugar pill. We call this what? Positive thinking. Right? The nocebo effect is equally important, which is negative thinking. Very good. Another signal is vibrational signal, energy. For example, some scientists try to measure the vibration, the energy of the human being when they have different intentions. Some people say that you can measure it. Well, there is a dispute there. But the most important thing is, our scholars always remind us and say, مَا خَرَجَ مِنَ الْقَلْبِ يَصِلُ إِلَى الْقَلْبِ What comes from the heart goes straight to the heart. So how many of you think that when a person does a work sincerely, the vibration of the heart is different? Like the energy that comes out from them is different. How many of you believe in this? We always see it, right? And I'm not talking about watching others. I'm watching myself. Like when I feel I'm doing a sincere job for the sake of Allah, pure for Allah, I feel what? I feel this sensation, a different vibration. So this energy is very important, although it is internal energy. Now, did Rasulullah speak of evil eye? Somebody looked at you and said, ding, knock down. This happened to one of the Sahaba, right? Wallahi, <laughs> mashallah, he had a, a strong body. So his brother, he said, whoa, mashallah, look at this. Bang, knock down. And the Rasulullah asked the other Sahaba to do what? To make wudu and give him the water and wash his body with, right? Now don't do this, please. Why? Because it's ghaib. Now you're going to come to somebody and say, man, you hit me with your evil eye. Make wudu and give me the water. We're going to create World War III. So don't do it. Because it's ghaib. Let's, let's, let's do something better. Who can tell me what is something better that we can do? Before the evil eye hits me, what should I do? Protect myself. Read the ta'awud. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falak. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas. Read ayatul kursi and all the adayah. And khalas, inshallah, you are protected. Inshallah. Okay. Now let's talk about ruqya. Uh, one of the scholars of the uh, Maliki Madhab, his name was Sahnoon. What was his name? Sahnoon. He's one of the main students in the, main scholars, I should say, in the Maliki Madhab. He used to make ruqya with Surah Al-Fatiha. Just re recite Fatiha, and mashallah, people, with the permission of Allah, just like the Sahabi who used Al-Fatiha and made ruqya for the chief of the tribe at the time of Rasul Sallallahu and he was healed automatically, immediately. And Rasulullah said, Subhanallah, and who taught him that Al-Fatiha was a ruqya? Remember that hadith? So Sahnoon used to do the same thing. After Sahnoon passed away, uh, <laughs> the students of Sahnoon started using Al-Fatiha to do ruqya. Did they have the same effect? No or no? No. So people started talking. Al-Fatiha is Al-Fatiha. But where is the yaqeen of Sahnoon? Ah, the yaqeen of Sahnoon. 
So when we do ruqya, we have three factors. How many? One, two, three. The yaqeen and the iman of the person who says the ruqya matters. Because this person who was reciting the ayat of ruqya either will increase it or decrease it. Because of his what? Because of his iman and yaqeen. And the second factor is the ayat of ruqya. Which ayat am I reciting? Am I reciting the ayat of ruqya? Yes or no? And then the iman of the receiver. Let's say we have sahnoon here. But somebody who does not believe that the Quran works for ruqya. Do you think that al-fatiha will heal them? Very difficult. So the yaqeen of the reciter is very important. The iman of the reciter is very important. The ayat that we recite are important. And also the yaqeen of the receiver. So it all goes back to what? To the iman and yaqeen. Same applies for dhikr. And these are the power of words. Now there is a famous hadith by Rasulullah which is very, very beautiful. And all the speech of Rasulullah is beautiful. He says in Arabic, كُلَّمَا أَصْبَحَ ابْنُ آدَمْ Every day in the morning, فَإِنَّ الْأَعْضَاءَ كُلَّهَا Every day in the morning, all body organs to كَفِّرُ lisan Speak to the tongue, telling him to be careful. To كَفِّر means be careful. Uh, what does the body organs tell the tongue according to the hadith of Rasulullah كلما أصبح ابن آدم فإن الأعضاء كلها تكفر اللسان تقول إنما نحن بك إن استقمت استقمنا وإن عوجزت عوجزنا Every single day in the morning the body organs speak up to the tongue they say watch out tongue tongue watch out we will be according to you if you are straight we will be straight if you are crooked we will be crooked what is, called, what is this called? It's called linguistic programming. That the words that we use program us and others. How many of you think that if a teacher keeps telling their student, you are stupid, you are stupid, you are stupid, there is a great chance that the student will believe it? How many of you believe in that? How about the parents? Which one is more powerful? We are born with a natural bond and love with our parents. My teacher tells me you're stupid, it impacts me. But my parent, it might kill me. So please be careful. So here is the tongue with a warning. How does our Iman impact our body's biology? Okay, I'm going to pass this. Okay, now I'm going to summarize, right? So we talked about what? We talked about signals. These signals could be physical signals like the food we eat or the medicine that we inject our body with or the pills, right? But also it could be energy like the words we say or the thoughts that we have on our minds. Here is what happens. Please focus on this one because this is very, very important. Now we receive things from the outside world. Here is a signal coming to our brain. What controls the brain? There is something above the brain. What is it? Starts with the letter M. I said in the beginning, if you control the two M's, you will control your health, inshallah. The mind. The software. So, these gadgets are made after us. We are not made after them. They invented the computers like the creation of Allah, like the human being. This gadget has software and hardware. Do we have software? It's called the human mind. What do we have in our mind? Our beliefs and our values. And our rules that define our beliefs and our values. What is the difference between a belief and a value? What, okay, belief has to do with what? True or false? Exist does not exist, right? Oh, it's either, oh, I believe in this, true. I don't believe in this, false. This is normally what belief is. But values 
is how you rank things for importance. For example, the difficult things in front of a judge. Is he going to value justice or mercy? Uh, I'm going to apply justice, for example. Or let me be a little bit lenient and forgive and merciful. So these are the these situations that we face in life. These are values. Huh? Mercy versus justice. Two ends, right? For example, you are working. Uh, what is the main value as you work? Tell me some values that, that you know, govern your work. Is it quality? Or is it speed? You want to finish faster? <laughs> Which one you value more? Uh, your boss comes to you and he tells you, look, this project is extremely important. This project costs a billion dollars. Are you going to do it in five days? So the value of quality becomes, goes to the top. Now he comes to you and tells you, look, this project is due next week. I need you to finish it by Friday. So the value of speed becomes evident. So these values operate and we store them in our minds. Now what's important here? What's extremely important? That as the signals go to our brain, our brain waits for our mind. Our mind is going to filter the information, is going to classify the information, and then he is going to convert that signal into a filtered signal that will go to our body as a signal. This filtered signal will impact our biology, our cells, and our genes. Make sense now? So what controls a lot of our biology? Our what? And what do we have in our mind? Our iman, our belief, our values, and personal rules. Let me ask you a question. I have 50 people in one room, and I show them exactly the same movie. And I start asking them questions, opinions about the movie. How many opinions am I going to have? Why? They saw the same thing. The signal that entered is the same thing. What's, what's different? This, this, this thing here. Make sense? So our beliefs and our values would filter all the information that we receive from the outside world. What is this called in psychology? It starts with a P. Per perception. It's how I see things. It's how I perceive things. Very good. I'm almost done. Can we, can we hold the questions? Okay, I want to finish as, as quickly as, as possible. Okay, there's an area in the brain called the RAS, reticular activating system. It has to do with focus. Please remember, RAS has to do with? RAS has to do with? Focus has to do with? And RAS has to do with? Are you focused? Very good. Okay. How many of you, when you bought a car, either used or new, you started seeing a zillion cars like your car on the road? How many of you have this experience? What happened? Well, you bought the car, now you are aware of it, now you are seeing all the cars. Why did you didn't see as many before? Because your RAS reads your belief and your values and filters the information that is coming to you according to importance. Wallahi, if you, if you learn this tonight, it's very, very valuable. I'm going to tell you why in a second. Let me repeat it one more time. Your belief, your mind, what you think is true, your values would impact what you see. Why? Because we cannot, we cannot receive zillion information around us. Our mind has to give instruction to the brain, look, filter this, see this, don't see that. How many of you have the experience that we fail to see things that were in front of us in our face? How many of you can? It's because of the RAS. Why is this critical? Because of this ayat of the Quran. This is calligraphy. Who can read this one? This one. Who can read this one? Inna ma'al usri 
Yusra, and the other ayah is Inna ma'al usri Yusra. Who can translate this ayah for me? Fa'inna ma'al usri Yusra. Who can translate it for me? Before the one and two, I, I'm interested in the word ma. Hmm. Among. What else? With. Anybody else? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Allah says ma. What does ma mean in Arabic? During. Okay, what else? After. After. Okay, who else? Ma. What does it mean? Allah says, there is usur, which means difficulty or tribulation or hardship, and there is yusur, which is ease. This is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with His favor and mercy, will ease the situation. But we are trying to understand. We have difficulty and we have ease. And there is ma'a. What does that ma'a mean? Somebody, some of you said with. Some of you said during. Some of you said after. Which one is it? Huh? With. The, trans, the correct translation is with. What does that mean? As the difficulty is going on, Allah has given us the solution with it, with it, with it, with it. Now sometimes because of our wrath, we don't see it. Especially if I tell myself, oh man, there is no way, there is no way for me to solve this. Does that make sense? And if you interpret this uh, uh, ayah and the other one, like our scholars, you're going to say the Arabic language has definite and indefinite word. Uh, usur was definite, which means it's the same one. Yusur was indefinite. Allah repeated it twice. So he's saying, Allah is saying that with every difficulty, with it, with it, Allah is sending double the ease. The solution is with it. And in Surah At-Talaq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, there is a third Yusur coming. When is, when is it going to come? Who's, who can read this calligraphy? Sayaj'alu Allahu what? Ba'da usrin yusra. What does ba'da mean? So for every difficulty, how many eases we have? Two with it and one after it. I, I need to work on myself to benefit from these ayat. I need to adjust my rest. Uh, so this RAS, reticular activating system, if I don't have the correct belief, it's going to start filtering crucial information from around me. Allah says, every difficulty has two eases with it and one coming after. So pay, pay attention to your RAS, reticular activating system. Here's a story for you. In uh, 1954, before 1954, humans believed that it was impossible for any human being to run a four-minute mile. What does that mean, four-minute mile? One mile, 1 1.6 kilometers, somebody will run it in four minutes or less. This guy trained himself mentally first, and then he used to exercise, and he has done it. In 3.59.4. Guess what happened after he broke that belief? What happened? What happened? Tell me quickly, quickly, what happened? A lot of people done it. So we need you. Wallahi, we need everybody here. We need you to start shattering our limiting beliefs. Sometimes growing up, sometimes because of our culture, or because of whatever, whatever it is, we have limiting beliefs that we can't. But if you focus, if you have the iman and the yaqeen, and you have the belief that you can, you know, do it, do it because you are going to do it for yourself and many other people as well. Let me go back quickly. Let's skip this and finish with this hadith. Uh, somebody who can read Arabic. Who wants to read this for me, please? I will read it again, but I want to... To participate. Yalla. Somebody read this hadith. This is narrated by Imam Muslim in his Sahih.
Read out loud. Okay, I'll read it because you guys don't have the microphone. So Rasulullah was reported to have said, Ajaban li amril mu'min. What does the word ajaban mean? Admired. Ajib. I use the word ajib a lot. Ajib means what? It's like, yani, it's like, it makes you wonder. It puzzles you. Amazing. Jazakallah khair. Beautiful word. Amazing. So amazing, wonderful, ajib, you know, it's admired. What is it, Ya Rasulullah, that is admired? The matter of the mu'min. Ajaban li amril mu'min. Inna amrahu kullahu shuf lahu. Inna amrahu kullahu lahu. All his matter, all of it is for him. Kullahu lahu. It's for him, not against him. Who is Rasulullah talking about? Who? Al Mu'min. He did not say Al Muslim. Which means that this requires belief that you believe in this. Amazing. Admired is the matter of the Mu'min, the believer. All his matters are good for him. And this is not for anyone except for the believer. وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ this, is, this, is, this requires iman. Iman in what? In this that we are talking about. What is it, Ya Rasulullah? High five. In asabathu sarra'a shakar fakana khayran lah. If good things happen to him from Allah, bounties, blessings, he is or she is grateful, shakar, does shukur. And this is good for him or her. Wa in asabathu darra' sabar fakana khayran lah. And if a calamity befalls onto him or her, they will be patient and this is better for them or good for them. So it takes what? It takes belief. Belief in what? Belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and belief that this, this will impact my body and my genes. I would like to end with one last idea which is homosexuality. A young brother back in 2010, he was studying genetics as his pre-med. And he came to discuss with me, and alhamdulillah, all the youth know, and I'm saying this again, in Islam we have no prohibited questions, no offensive questions. And alhamdulillah, now we have our Sheikh Fahmi, a great mufti, a great scholar, he's going to help us also, you know, to explain, uh, you know, the word of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah in uh, a scholarly uh, matter. So this young brother came to me and said, Sheikh Zaid, I would like to discuss something with you. I said, what? At that time, a lot of articles were coming out talking about that homosexuality was in the genes and stuff like that. So he said, I want to talk to you about this. You know, I'm studying science, I'm studying genetics. These are research bodies and stuff like that. Alhamdulillah, at that time, I had knowledge of Dr. Bruce Lipton Morrow, the biology of belief. So we discussed it, and here is what, summarizing what I told him. I said, any changes to the body of a person who is homosexual, who was born, you know, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them, fine. You know, they are perfectly male or perfectly female. There are no issues. We are not talking about hermaphrodites. Hermaphrodites is sometimes, biologically, some uh, people are born with, both organs. We're not talking about this. We're talking about somebody who is perfectly born with his, you know, faculties, male or female. I told him, if you see changes, that is the product of what? Who can, who can help me here? If you, uh, to see if you are following me. This is the product of what? Of their mind. They put it so much in their mind that they started altering their biology and possibly they could alter what? They're what? You know why? Because Allah created some genes whose function it is to rewrite the genes. Did you know that? Dr. Blue Slipton, through research, showed that there are not all the genes. Alhamdulillah, we don't want to take care of all our genes because it's going to be more complicated. But he proved through research that there are genes whose function it is is to rewrite some of the genes. So if we keep putting these beliefs in our minds, what will happen to the body? 
it's going to respond accordingly. And this shows us the power of our mind. What does our mind have? Beliefs and values. And that's why the most frequent word repeated in the Quran and the Sunnah is, it's your belief. Amanu, 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 amanu. And of course, amilu salihat. But amilu salihat is a product of the belief. Does that make sense? Now, this what I said to the brother. I quoted him a hadith from Rasulullah I'm assuming that a lot of you know the hadith. Who can take a guess? What hadith I'm talking about? That when people start doing stuff and believing stuff in their minds, they could possibly impact you know, their gender identity. Rasulullah did not mention gender identity, but he warned people not to do that. Who remembers the hadith? Who remembers the hadith? It starts with the word la'ana. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. Allah yifta'ali. What does the word la'ana mean? La'ana, the verb la'ana. Allah cursed. Some of the interpretations among the scholars that this person is what? Is expelled from the mercy of Allah. So is it a strong word? Is it a strong warning? Sure it is. What is it, Ya Rasulullah? La'ana Allahu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. وَلَيَّذُ بِاللَّهِ لَعَنَ اللَّهُ الْمُتَشَبِّهِينَ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ بِالنِّسَى Allah has cursed, Allah has expelled out of His mercy those men who start acting like ladies. وَالْمُتَشَبِّهَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ بِالرِّجَالِ And those ladies who act like men. Subhanallah. After I, you know, learned a little bit about the research of Dr. Bruce Lipton, I read that hadith and it made perfect sense. So when a male starts mimicking female, what happened? He's sending strong signals through the mind to the brain. The brain is one of the most sophisticated biological systems that exist in the creation. So powerful. But who, what controls the, the, the brain? It's the mind. So if I, sig if I send signals to my brain, my brain will say what? Yes, master. I will do as you command. And unfortunately, in science, they don't talk a lot about the mind. They always talk about the brain, the brain, the brain, the brain, which is important. But in Islam, especially Muslim psychologists, alhamdulillah, we recognize the power of both. But we know that belief is extremely important. That's why Muslim psychologists talk a lot about what? The mind. I hope this is a benefit, inshallah. I try to explain it in the best uh, way possible. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the benefit. Uh, we'll, we'll, if there are any questions, we'll take a couple of questions quickly and then we'll move, inshallah. Because the food is waiting for us. Yes, sir. Very good. That's a beautiful question. So the brother says that the Quran talks about the qalb a lot, the heart. So here we use the term mind. So how can we fit both together? Quick answer. We are going to assume that the qalb that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks a lot about is part of the mind. Okay? Which means that this muscle has to do with the process of thinking. But at the end of the day, what matters? What I believe in and my values, right? The Quran was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Prophet Muhammad to teach us what? To teach us what? Iman. The right Iman. It says in these situations, pick your Iman. And these are stories of the Prophet, so you can pick your, your Iman. So we can go and debate, you know, what is the role of the heart, and, you know, is it part of the mind, it's not part of the mind, it has a mind on its own. But, you know, this discussion, inshallah, let's fit it, and 
make like a big mind that might include the heart, might include the, the mind that is related to consciousness. So it, yani, let's keep it relevant to this. But at the end of the day, what is the most important thing? What I believe, my belief. Because my belief will impact my biochemistry, my cells, and my genes. Yes, sir. Uh, my understanding, my humble, this is my humble understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam from the dust of the earth. He made him into a statue, right? Mud, you know, was dust, then water, the, the soil and water. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Adam, fashioned him into a statue. And he left him in Jannah, according to the hadith. Then after that, Allah what? Blew the spirit into him. So I believe that a human being has three main components. The body, the spirit, and when the spirit combines with the body, the human mind is formed. Well, if, if, if you want to apply quantum physics, then you, you could talk in terms of energy. But let's keep it relevant to our session here. The most important thing is that we start being what? Careful in our what? Beliefs. Our beliefs are very important. Because our beliefs will impact what? The way we act, the way we talk, the way we walk, but also our body and our genes. Why do scientists say that our belief impacts our genes? Because there are over than 100,000 proteins. And there are only around 40,000 genes. Four zero. So a uh, few decades ago, the pharmaceutical industry, they had a competition. Everybody was saying, oh, I'm going to take this gene for me. I'm going to, you know, patent it. And I'm going to make all the medicine related to it. Why? Because they used to believe in the 50s, when Watson and Crick discovered the DNA, they used to believe that everything goes back to the genes. They call it the supremacy and primacy of genes. Supremacy means the genes control biology. Primacy means if you have any problem, you start with the genes. But Dr. Bruce Lipton proved that it's not the case. It's the signal, and that signal is physical or spiritual. This signal is a pill of medicine. It's something that we eat, but also energy like our thoughts and the words that we say and the words that we hear. Okay? Inshallah. Other questions? Yes, please. Uh -huh. Would it be good if you could have that discussion as a way of calming the sound of like when the like when you know you are saying the right thing but you have to get out of the way. So that would be calming the sound of when you're saying the right thing. So you you know that the flux comes out of the body as a way of calming the sound of when to go for a talk or to do It's a great question, but I'm not going to uh, like entertain it here because there is a whole research, uh, and subhanAllah, uh, when I came first to the message, I met Sheikh Fahmi uh, b before Aisha. This was the question that I was discussing with him. We were discussing uh, how in science, in, in, in the brain science, uh, death is de defined. Because this, you know, this, this defines a lot of things. So th this is, I apologize, because it is a complicated question that we need to explain a lot of the brain functionality and what is death and what is not death. But, but what I'm trying to say is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in a way that we have the spirit and we have the mind, right? So these are like, from our end, they seem like energy. And we have what? The human body. What is the function of the human body? Let me ask you a question. Does the spirit belong to the natural world? Does it belong to this world, the spirit? Yes or no? No. The spirit came from where? From outside the physical world. So the body is from the earth. It eats from what? From the food of the earth. It eats rice, beans, makluba if you are Palestinian, biryani if you are for Desi. What else? Nadim's chai. <laughs> right? Meat, fruits. So the body is from the earth. It nurtures from the earth. The spirit that came from outside the natural world, it feeds from what? 
the revelation of Allah. That's why Allah revealed it. The spirit came from outside the universe. The revelation came from outside the universe. And when you combine both, you have the human mind. What nurtures the human mind? Knowledge. So to balance the human being, we need to nurture our body and follow the Islamic diet, right? Right? Then, feed our spirit. And then with knowledge, we feed our mind. What is the basic message of Ramadan? The basic message of Ramadan is the following. Allah chose Ramadan to reveal the Quran. What is the message? The message is the following. In Ramadan, Muslims, you fast. Right? Fasting means you minimize the food of the body. And the tradition of Rasulullah and the ayat of the Quran and the ten uh, nights and the Laylatul Qadr, uh, we should do what? Maximize our what? Spiritual food. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the month of Ramadan to reveal the Quran because the Quran represents the highest food for the spirit. He says, in the month that you minimize the food of your body, I'm going to give you the maximum food for your spirit. Does that make sense? Yes. Why do we need the body? Because the ruh does not belong to this natural world. Without this body, we cannot appreciate the singing of the birds or the waves of the ocean. So this body is like the robot that NASA sends to the planets. That robot reads and surveil, it makes surveillance for pressure, temperature, reads the environment, and sends it back to us here on Earth. Why? Because we are not from there. We cannot live there. So the robot acts like our body. So our body reads the physical world and it sends it back to the spirit. But when we die, what happens to the, to the body? It vanishes and then we are essentially the spiritual being. At the day of judgment, what happens to the body? Uh, is it a different body? In Jannah, is it a different body? In Jahannam, is it a different body? Rasulullah says, the, the mule, the tooth of the non-believer in Jahannam is like the mountain of Uhud. So the spirit will carry, you know, carry that. Uh, what, this, is, this is a philosoph philosophical topic, I don't want to go there. But there is the idea. Brother, uh, let's take last question from Brother Muhammad. No, we don't want you to protect your mind with, uh, with earplugs. <laughs> Very good. Th this is a beautiful question, by the way. Wallahi. The way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to protect our mind, first of all, there are instructions for the eyes, right? He says, look here, don't look there. And there are instructions for the ears. He said, hear this, don't hear that, right? But most importantly, as you walk, especially in the streets of Chicago, you are going to be exposed to many things. What aids you? What protects you? Your iman, your belief. That's why Sayyidina Jundub ibn Abdullah, he was a teenager. He said, he said, Kunna fityan hazawira. Hazawira, yani sin al عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فتعلمنا الإيمان ثم تعلمنا القرآن ثم فتعلمنا الإيمان ثم تعلمنا القرآن ثم ازددنا بالقرآن إيمانا جندب بن عبد الله says we were youngsters around رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم the age of puberty right we learned إيمان first and then we learned the Quran and then with the Quran we increased our إيمان so remember our إيمان makes us or breaks us so inshallah, let's wrap it up. Let's make dua. Uh, is Sheikh Dirzawi here? Okay, let's make dua, inshallah. أعوذ بالله سبحانه وتعالى من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وفر لنا إنك أنت الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالحب وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر سبحانك لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين جزاكم الله خير من الله ربي Food should be ready, inshallah.
Brother Khalid has announced. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, just a quick reminder about tomorrow's uh, rally in uh, Schaumburg. It's going to be at 1.30 Sunday tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. to 4 p.m. Golf Road and Meekam Road. Please attend and invite your family members, inshallah. So the rallies are coming back again. The weather is warming up. I know we slowed down, but we have to keep the pressure. Do your best. Stay warm and come out if you can. Thank you so much.